Hey there, it's Cheryl Klein here. This is a very special day. We are with Megan Bozuto, the Vice President of Marketing and Customer Experience for IAW. And I'm really excited to have you here today. Thanks for being here, Megan. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, we've had, yeah, we've had many, many conversations and interactions, and it was a pleasure to do a webinar for your organization. There's a lot of exciting things coming up. But before we talk about you know, your your topic um, that's obviously super important. We want to kind of what understand what made you so passionate about, um, you know, women supporting women. And I also, you know, you're going to speak to too, it's not this conversation is not exclusive of men. It's very inclusive, but we're just talking specifically now Kind of the difference in power of women supporting women and can you share a little bit about when you were younger or what what inspired you yeah so my so i i'm in a marketing role now which i absolutely love but i started my career in accounting and finance and had some interactions early in my career where i was left feeling very challenged i was i was either confronted with being very young in the workforce and not having a lot of experience um, or with kind of sexist comments. And I never had somewhere to turn to. I had one mentor on my team who was fantastic, but she wasn't always there. And it's like, I never had a group of women who I could really count on to say, is this, like, how do I, how do I react to this? How, is this normal? Do I just continue my job? What, what am I supposed to be doing? And so I landed at IAW, International Association of Women, about three and a half years ago. and. I love being able to offer value to women and bring groups of women together to, to support each other through either work challenges, through growing a business, through developing skills, growing your influence. Like there's so many things that we're able to do and we come together to support each other through networking events, through content, through just conversation. Um, and so those experiences earlier in my career because I think they left me feeling very challenged, I'm at a point now where I get to help rise to that challenge and guide people and say, this is not okay. And here's some examples of how you can react to that. Here's some examples of things you can do. Yeah, so that is amazing because we need a lot of people on the front lines doing your, your work and really like paving a way. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask you a question that might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I think you have a really good insight and that would be, you know, we talk about, um, you know, diversity in the workplace and empowering women. But yeah. one thing that I've become a little bit more educated on this year is that there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of inequality within our gender. Yep. And so can you tell me a little bit about, you know, IEW and also not just how, you know, they're facilitating and addressing and helping women all women support each other especially women who are in groups that are further marginalized yep but speak a little bit to that and also maybe a little bit to you and like why you care because i absolutely. think absolutely i think that's just as important as we do this we do this we do this which is incredibly important if it's a mission but right. I think that there's a heart behind the mission so i want to absolutely hear yeah well. so this um there's there's been a lot of internal dialogue about diversity and supporting all women but is our content is our programming is it enough right where can we strengthen where can we add more value how do we make sure that we're supporting all of our members and representing every type of professional woman right and so we um personally i've been doing a lot to a lot of reading a lot of listening to podcasts a lot of just educating myself to better understand. There's a lot that I didn't even know about, right? There's there's so much that I've learned about how women of color are treated sometimes in the workplace. And so that feeds into, oh, well, what types of programs, what support can we offer? But at the same time, I'm likely not the person that should be writing that content. I, I can help feed into it, but I need more, I need more voices, right? I need more support. So we're actually, at IAW, we're building a council that will help us to further, imp further improve the content and the programming of IAW. 
This council will consist of a, a diverse group of women from all across the United States. And that way we're able to incorporate more voices. We're able to, to really better understand, like I can, I can build content based on what people are searching for and what the trends are. But for those of you that are out doing things, like what is it that you need support with? Where, where can we help? What can we do? Personally, I, 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 so I have a older brother who's a principal in Philadelphia and he's, he's been amazing in terms of supporting the kids in his school and really pushing messages of diversity and seeing all of that work has empowered me to do the same, but it's, it's really spreading that message that we want, like everyone's important and I want to make sure that whatever support we can be providing, we're providing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's incredible. And I'm glad that you brought that up because one thing that's coming out more and more is like a lot of times we don't even fully understand our privilege. Yep. Um, and so I think having that diverse support is really important. And yep. so we were talking a little bit before we came on the call, before we talk about specific strategies of intentional networking, um, we were talking a little bit about that this, when we talk about women supporting women, it's not exclusive of men, but it's it's really um, understanding that something that is unique and special when you bring women and women together to support each other, and maybe that it's not being seen enough. I know when I've been either speaking or coaching or training here in San Francisco or Silicon Valley or you know worldwide, it's just, it seems like there's a lot of support when there's a great, um, chasm in between like a leader and someone that's more um, that's more new to their career but a lot of times there's not as much support as there could be once things start getting a little more equal or once women start getting to similar areas of experience so Absolutely. so can you share a little bit about what is so special and different and we're not talking about better we're just talking about Different. Right. And yeah. because I don't, it's not that it, there's, there's, I'm not, ex I don't want to, I'm not excluding men, right? There are, I've had men mentors. I've had, there's men in my network. It's not that men aren't, don't play a role here, but I've also seen the power of women coming together. And when you have challenges in the workplace, being able to discuss those things and share and get input from a group of like-minded people. And so most likely your network's going to have men who are equal to you and it's good to ask their opinion, but sometimes there's topics that a group of women is going to provide the best input. And so if you, if you have that group of like-minded women, and I just find that women are so willing to step up and help and step up and answer those questions. And that often there's a comfort associated with being with women with women. And so within our, we have virtual networking roundtables where we have very open, honest dialogue and people aren't afraid to raise their hand and ask questions. Or if if they are, we have private chat. So we have ways that people can ask anonymously, but getting support from people who are kind of walking the same walk, um, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thanks for bringing that up. And then what about, you know, going forward? What what you know if you take your story from the past you know i'm not sure let's say if you think even going further back let's say to when you were between six and 12 or maybe around when you know your kids age i know you have three kids that just started yeah. school today so i yep. want to out for that <laughs> your job and also your job is that your other full-time job as a parent um but is there something that inspired you when you were like your kids age and so if you think about that, then I want you to think about, well, what do you want, you know, what do you want really your legacy to be? Because a lot of times I talk to that a lot with my one-on-one -on -one clients because we, sometimes we get stuck in where things are today. And, you know, if we, it's such a long path in the future to achieve something rather than thinking about how do we want it to turn out once we're not here and just creating that ideology in our mind that yep. way we can stay really um, on path and course correct when necessary. So what was the person or event or something that either inspired you to greatness or that really, like you said, made your life kind of difficult 
that yeah. would turn out? I mean, I don't know that I have anything specific from when I was younger. I think that a big turning point for me, when I was 15, I moved from Vermont to, no, sorry, from Ohio to Vermont. And I was a sophomore in high school. And I lived in the same house my entire life. And I never, I, I had my college picked out an hour nearby. Like I never planned to pick up and move. And then, so you're taken from your comfort zone and you're placed in this entirely new world. And we also went from a, a decent city in Ohio to the middle of Vermont, very different, very different lifestyle. Um, it pushed, it challenged me to break out of that comfort zone. It challenged me to learn how to meet new people. I, I, I mean, I grew up with the same friends. I never had to meet new people. We had new people come to town, but it was never about really putting myself out there and having to think about how am I gonna make friends? Who am I gonna spend time with? And so that move really sort of put that itch in me of, oh, there's more to this world than just Ohio. And so I, I went to school in the Boston area. When I graduated, I started a job um, working for IBM as an auditor and I, it was 90% travel. So I got to see the world. <laughs> um, I went to China, I went to France, I went to Ireland, a lot of United States travel, but it was that, put, so that move when I was 15 pushed me out of my comfort zone and showed me that the world is a great place and you can meet anybody anywhere, but you have to put yourself out there. You have to, you have to know how to introduce yourself and start conversation and, and welcome it in. Um, so I, I would say that's, that's probably one of the, the driving forces behind this concept of networking and, and showing other people how to do it. Yeah. And you bring up something very important and I'm really glad that you share that story because we all know, that really success lies outside of our comfort zone. But a lot of times we don't exist outside of our comfort zone on our own, or we might stick our toe out and then come back in. And so your life would be very different if you weren't sho literally and figuratively shoved out of your comfort zone. Yep. Um, and we took, I mean, I, one step further, um, four months after my first child was born, we moved to China and we spent two years living in Shanghai. And then we spent three years living in Dubai. And I don't know that I ever would have been open to those those opportunities if I hadn't literally been shoved into a move. <laughs> yeah. So. And so that we're going to parlay into networking because when, you know, and I just, I'm leading a big cohort. You're just talking about um, like accountability and choosing accountability partners. And so when we talk about networking, I want to now understand what what is the real power of intentional networking, how to do it, and then also do you take into consideration that you want to network with people who maybe are outside your comfort zone? Maybe you think yep. might not want to network with you or further down that path. I mean, people that are going to push you outside of your comfort zone and show you what really exists outside of your world. So are there a couple tips that you can give us about intentional networking yep. that really rests on a little bit on your story that you just shared? Yeah. And so one of the ways that like my network has played a big role in the opportunities that I've had in the marketing world. So I, after living overseas for five years, when we came home, I decided I didn't want to go back into that accounting finance world. So I, I started in marketing, working for a consultant and worked my way up to a point where I was ready to go off on my own, but we were also moving. So I said, okay, well, I'll go, I'm going to do my own thing after we move. And um, my network, brought me every single client when I was freelancing. All it was was conversations. And it wasn't even through business networking groups. It was at a mom's group. It was at a local Starbucks. It was through through people I had met through town. And just by having authentic conversation about what I'm doing and what other people are doing, it was, oh, I know somebody who needs a website. I need some, I know somebody who needs marketing support. And so when I say intentional networking, it's it's kind of having those conversations in an authentic way where you know your elevator pitch, you know what value you provide, you know what services you have. And so if the conversation naturally goes there, let it go there. <laughs> um, at the same time, I'm always looking for who's my next, who's who who else do I need in my network? So I know that it's like now I've my my freelancing opened the door to IAW and I started at IAW as a consultant. I've worked my way up to where I am. Um, but I know that my network doesn't stop here. I'm always looking for who are additional people that 
I can support and they might be able to support me. I, um, one of the things I talk a lot about with networking is I give the example of the person who shows up at an event and just puts their business card on the table and walks away. And that leaves me with this like, who, what, okay, I don't, are we supposed to have a relationship from that? Whereas if you, if you have an inner, and I know we're not at in-person events, so this is a little different right now, but whereas if you have that introduction and you understand what do you do and what do I do and how can we best support each other, that's going to be a more authentic experience. Um, and I'm, I, oftentimes when I'm meeting somebody, I'm looking at how can I help you? I'm not looking at it from what are you going to give me? What are you, what are you going to give me? It's more about what do you need right now? How can I help you? Do you need an introduction? Is there somebody in my network I can connect you with? And I think it's important to give before you have this expectation of receiving and let the receive, let the giving to you happen naturally because it's built up to that. Yeah, I think that's an amazing point because by you giving, you're going to be top of mind anyway. And it's, you know, um, it's a human drive that we feel here for. And acknowledged, yep. and that's just there's no better way of doing that and mm -hmm. authentic connection. So absolutely for bringing that up. And so, what about what about? I mean, these come into play when you're looking for clients or looking for jobs. But what about if you're inside a company? How can this intentional? Yeah. So for me, what this has looked like for me in my career is being open to so having an idea of career development right so what where what's the end goal and this is not something that i've practiced very well because i ended up where i'm at in a way that i didn't expect i didn't see this coming i didn't plan to to step into a full-time role and and be be leading things but the opportunity presented itself and i wanted the opportunity and it all lined up perfectly but from a career perspective when i've worked for other companies it it was always about um, talking to people in other departments. So understanding what IT is doing and what accounting is doing and what HR is doing and and thinking through like, what, what do I want the end result? What am I trying to get to? What are the relationships I need to make that happen? What are the jobs I need to make? What skills, what ne what's my next job? And, and thinking through it from a point of development of how, if I'm gonna stay at this company, how am I gonna get to that next spot? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, if you're looking to change companies, then your network becomes very important because who outside, who maybe has a job that is at a company that you're interested in, looking at how do you get your foot in the door at other places? Yeah, so that is along the lines about, you know, proceed with the end in mind. So a lot of people think, you know, within my company, this is such a challenge. How do I get, you know, how do I get the promotion? How do I get the raise? How do I get those things? Right. Rather than saying, okay, let's assume that that promotion has happened. Let's assume that raise has happened. What are the relationships I need to make? And if that's the same, if you're moving outside of a company. So yep. in other words, what is the end game for me? Right. So that is the huge difference um, from being strategic versus being reactive. Right. And so thanks so much for so it looks like we have a couple great tips here that what I'm hearing, and it seems like you're talking about um, first give before you receive. Yes. Um, for sure. Get clear on your end game. So in other words, what what is it that you want and where you're going, where are you going? And then how can you get strategic about building the relationships um, to get there? And also too, not forgetting building the skills to get there as well. Yeah. So those are all really great things that we can really sink our, ha our hands, our teeth into and really take control during our next level um, of leadership, depending on wherever that is for us. And is there anything, you know, my last question is, is there anything different now that pretty much everything is virtual? So one thing that comes to mind is I know that certain communications are appropriate for email versus phone call versus video. So can you just give us like a little bit of insight or one tip or strategy on how we can 
um, up our intentional networking or next level it, especially now that in, you know, in lieu of seeing people in person. Yeah. Yeah, I can, because one of the things, so IAW has created regional networking events that are actually open to the public. Anybody's welcome to attend these and they provide a networking opportunity. And one of the things I've said about these is these have actually opened my world. So IAW is chapter based and I could network with people in Boston, but not always had great opportunity to have conversation with people beyond the Boston area. Whereas now I'm talking to people from all over the country on a regular basis and getting to interact with them and, and attend these sessions and they're great. And so I think my tip would be show up. If, if you see an event on the calendar and it's something that interests you and there's gonna be a networking opportunity, attend that event and be prepared to speak about what you do be prepared to form these relationships and, and meet some people, connect on LinkedIn or send an email and and follow up to, to start, like what's the next step of that relationship? I think that you have to think through what's the relationship you're building and is it somebody who's kind of like way up here that is like a dream networker, like somebody that would be really beneficial or is it somebody that is gonna be a LinkedIn contact and that you're gonna nurture for a while along the way? Um, yeah, and I think one thing that I really want to reiterate and hit home, all these things are so important, but you mentioned follow-up. You go through the process, which is something that honestly I help walk people through, but get helping people to get clear on what an aspirational, the legacy they want to leave, you know, and creating a blueprint and putting in the time and effort and work to getting clear and building up the confidence, you know, and all those things. But when you identify those people and you're doing the work, the follow-up is important. And a lot of times I'm gonna throw us women under the bus all at the same time. We make, we're really good storytellers. So we might reach out, we might not hear, and oh, that person is not interested in helping me or they're so much further along or they're, you know, I don't know whatever stories we make up in our mind. When, especially these times, so many things are coming up that are not related to us. And so that, Follow up with is so important. And I wish I would have learned this earlier in my career where you're talking about, but following up with adding value. Yep. Like if no one gets like following up with value, say, you know, um, you know, when we met, like you can still follow up with them and try and get an appointment or get something on the calendar or whatever it is that you're trying to do, but also drop something in there of value, you know, um, that might help them out. So, you know, recently and I'm not sure if I've sent it to you, but I have a Forbes article that was out. So that came up. So in all my communications, because I think it's very relevant to people that I'm communicating with, it's just a snippet of something that might help. So that building that authentic, um, well, two things. First, being strategic, getting clear, being strategic, um, give before you receive, and also follow up. If you can nail down those three things, um, I think we can both agree that you'll be off to the races when it comes to, you know, networking and yeah. really getting clear and creating what it is that you want and deserve. Because, you know, I think we've all seen that success doesn't happen in solitude. And there's something very special about women helping women when we understand how to do it. There's enough to go around and that, um, we're going to be an important part of healing the world and helping right. it first correct. So thank you for all that you do. And is there anything you want? If people are really interested in International Association of Women, they want to learn a little bit more either about the free networking opportunities or getting yep. involved. Uh, we have the website up. It's just www.iawomen.com. And did you want to leave anyone with anything else? No, I think, I mean, those great tips. I'm, I, if, if there's questions, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm always open to connecting and expanding my network. If you have questions about IAW, they can come direct to me as well. But we, we definitely are offering some fun events um, with interesting keynotes with uh, networking tied in. So it's a great way to get involved and, and learn a little bit more about IAW for anyone interested. Yeah, and thanks so much. I've been involved. I've been a speaker. I've been on the other side. They've always been fun and impactful and definitely more than well worth the time. So I recommend that you go to iawomen.com or go ahead and connect with Megan Bozzuto, M-E-G-A-N-B-O-Z-Z-U-T-O on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Megan. And I look forward to 
continuing the conversation. And I'm also a proud member of IEW. I wanted to throw that yep. in. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Keep up all of your amazing work. Thank you, Cheryl. Nice talking to you today.